So Mr. J.D. Rockefeller, interesting guy. By the way, anyone seen this great uh, History Channel program called The Men Who Built America? Oh, isn't it good? Oh my. Problem is you go to buy it on iTunes and you can't. So I had to buy this thing called a, a DVD. And I went, oh, what am I supposed to do with this? And you know the worst part is? First thing is, then the first one I got was a Blu-ray and my computer doesn't play Blu-rays. So I gave that one away and I had to order another DVD. It's like, it's like a cassette tape, it's like an eight track. Anyways, so, but, so I'm sure there's a way around iTunes, I didn't figure it out. But it's amazing, it's about um, J.D. Rockefeller, it's about uh, Andrew Carnegie, it's about uh, Henry Ford, it's about J.P. Morgan, uh, Thomas Edison's in there, the men who built America. Man, if you wanna learn about strategy and, and oh, Gosh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it kind of makes you go, oh boy, these old boys were ruthless. It's fascinating. Anyways, it's a History Channel documentary on, and there's about what, six episodes or seven episodes. It's phenomenal. So you know, on Rockefeller, I even learned more about Rockefeller. But here's the deal with Rockefeller. Um, he retired in his 50s, 50s. By today's standard, if his companies were bolted back together, he'd still be the richest man in America. In, sorry, in the world. Richest man in the world. Incredible. Incredible discipline, also incredibly ruthless, and incredibly generous. He gave away an incredible amount of money. So um, he had this company called Standard Oil that back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, had more than 60% market share. 64, I think, is the exact number. And the government doesn't like that, so they forced him to break it up. He tried everything as power. And it was broken up into companies known as um, Shell, Shell, no. Amoco. Amoco, Chevron, X, SO, Exxon, I think I mentioned already. So those are just a few of the 30 some odd companies that he was forced to split it up into. I mean, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. And, and so extremely successful. But there's three things that the Rockefeller habits are modeled after. Number one is daily meetings. There's a partner here. He and his partners would walk to and from the office every day. Well, what did that do for them? It got them aligned. It gave them time to talk and get their brains in sync with each other. That's where the daily meetings come from. Now, in our, in our world today, who walked here together this morning? Okay, how is that possible? You stayed at a hotel, right? Yes, okay, you stayed at a hotel, okay, okay. But normally, we don't, we don't walk to work. I mean, it, it doesn't work in the way in which we live today. So we have to kind of artificially create that walk, and we call it a daily meeting. 10 or 15 minutes to get aligned, in sync, and kind of share all the stuff we need to share. Second thing is incredible, incredible discipline and that's the Rockefeller habits, right? 10 disciplines that when you do them, your company works better. You can't argue with them, they're common sense. And you know why you know they're so good? Because it's what people do when their companies get messed up. It's how they save it. Guess what happens if we have a real big problem with our employees? We start doing the stuff on the checklist that gets employees more engaged and back on track. It's common sense, so incredible, incredible discipline. And then the final is daily data. You'll hear us talk about daily data a lot. This man was crazy, crazy smart. He used to get daily data from the oil fields in Russia all the way back here to Cleveland, Ohio in the late 1800s, early 1900s. They didn't have SMS or fax or telephones even for that matter. It was all these little telegraph machines. Can you imagine? Who, I mean, to even think about it and saying, yes, I would like daily data when, when you could barely communicate next, you know, the next town, never mind across the world. But that data, the combination of the discipline, the being in sync with his people in his meetings, and the data gave him that advantage, right? And that ties back into those, those three disciplines that we talk about. Fascinating thing is even when Rockefeller moved to New York, he made sure that he and his partners bought their apartments close together so they could continue the walking routine because he knew how powerful it was. And then they upped the ante. And they had lunch every day with their executive team. Like, think about it. How would you feel if you had a direct competitor and you knew that they were every day having lunch together as an executive and talking about it for an hour? How would you feel? I don't know, it'd make me kind of nervous. Because if they're smart and they have some sort of discipline, that's gonna be a very, very productive meeting. So that's Rockefeller. Data, discipline, and daily meetings.